Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy on location here at beautiful Keeneland Racecourse. And back in New Jersey, of course, is my eligible partner, Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? Well, I'm really jealous right now looking at the setting behind you, Brian. I'm glad you're having such a beautiful setting and such a beautiful day at Keeneland. Wow. Yeah, Keeneland's a great place to be, Matt. And of course, this is day one of the Keeneland September yearling sale. So I'm having a good time. But First, we have business, we have Horse Center, and we need to jump into the Breeders' Cup, Matt. And I think one of the biggest stories of the Breeders' Cup is where two of the top horses in America are gonna end up. Are they dirt mile bound, or will we see Liam's map in the classic and private zone in the sprint? Early thoughts, Matt? Well, as soon as Liam's map won the Woodward, the, the, the buzz was uh, amazing. It was all classic talk, classic cl talk, because of the concerns about American Pharaoh hooking up with Liam's map. But let's set that aside a little bit, Brian, and, and try and figure out what we think is the best spot for these two horses. Well, Liam's map certainly proved a lot to me at Saratoga, Matt. I thought his Whitney was huge and his Woodward was every bit as good. Uh, less, uh, less competition maybe in the Woodward, but that 114 buyer, the U.S., uh, uh, time form U.S. speed reins, they were off the charts. It was just a huge performance going two turns, nine furlongs. How do you not bring Liam's map of those two races to the $5 million biggest race of the year, richest race of the year, 10 furlongs of the Breeders' Cup Classic? Well, you know, uh, I guess setting money aside in terms of the purses for a moment, and then maybe we can talk about that too. Um, I don't know if uh, Liam's map can get the mile and a quarter, quite frankly. And and what's more important, uh, uh, winning a Breeders' Cup race, and, and I think Liam's map has got a terrific shot to win the dirt mile because it is going to be two turns. Well, I'm not going to argue with you, Matt, that uh, winning a Breeders' Cup race is nice. If you know that's going to ha happen, I'm not sold on that. Of course, one of the reasons I'm not sold on the Dirt Mile being a, a, a much easier race for him. It is an easier race, but a much easier race. And that's the specter of private zone running in the Dirt Mile as well. Now, we need to talk money a little bit because the Breeders' Cup Classic, besides being a much bigger race, a much more prestigious race and a, and a more valuable race to breeders, it is five times the dirt mile. I'm not sure how much the dirt mile win in the Breeders' Cup changes things as a stud, given that he's already won the Woodward. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Brian. And, and you know, and talking about the money, I, I think third place in, uh, or even, yeah, down to third place in the classic is probably going to get you about the same money as if you win the, uh, as if you win the dirt mile. And the win in the Woodward is pretty prestigious. It is two turns, and you add that in with all the other great one-turn wins that Liam Mapp has put up. I guess you're right. He's got a pretty good uh, stallion uh, uh, resume already. Yeah, and I think I think the Cigar Mile is still out there if he wants that one-turn grade one uh, uh, mile to get. But um, you know, I'm not sure. I. Of the two, I think Liam's map might be even more likely to end up in the dirt mile. But I tell you what, I'm, I'm not sure that American Pharaoh and or Beholder are going to want to hook him too early. So I think Liam's map might be out on the lead with at least a little bit of room to breathe for the first four furlongs, five furlongs, six furlongs in there. And then as good as he looked at Saratoga, he becomes a danger. Yeah, he certainly does. But, uh, you know, a mile and a quarter... I think I would be willing to tell my jockey, be it uh, American Pharaoh or be it Beholder, let Liam's map go, and I think we can run him down. Okay, at least we agree on that, Matt. I think that's the strategy employed by the Triple Crown winner, if Liam's map is indeed the race. And I think almost, you know, everybody said Liam's map is a roadblock for American Pharaoh, and probably the same could be said for Beholder, very similar running styles between the two. But I think uh, the, uh, the addition of Liam's map isn't such a bad thing for them because, yeah, I agree. I think they're going to sit in second and third and wait and uh, hope that they can uh, beat Liam's map on the far turn rather than in the back stretch. That might make Liam's map uh, 
job in the Breeders' Cup Classic just a little bit or, uh, easier. Now in the Dirt Mile, Private Zone. Private Zone is not a horse that's going to sit back behind Liam's map. So yeah. what do you think if both of them are in the Dirt Mile map? Oh, if, if Private Zone goes into the into the Dirt map, that I I think that the connections of Liam's map will be would be saying, oh gee, I think maybe we wish we went to the Classic. I don't know if uh, Private Zone can win going two turns. Liam's map might just be a better horse going two turns than Private Zone, but Private Zone has never been better in his career than he is right now. And if he's going to make a splash going two turns, this is the year to do it. It is kind of untested territory in terms of getting a victory for Private Zone going the two turns. If we, you know, take a look back at the seven wins that Private Zone has had in this country, three at six furlongs, three at seven furlongs, one at a one-turn mile, it's untested. But like I said, he's never been better. Yeah, I agree with you, Matt. Uh, yeah, if you look at his career record, the, the, especially in this country, uh, you see the one-turn domination there. He is tested at a mile. And uh, if there is no Liam's map, if Liam's map goes to the classic, I think either way it becomes easier for the one that does run in the dirt mile, if either of them run in the dirt mile, uh, to get that lead because, frankly, they might be the two fastest horses in America, or at least the fastest horses that can, that can run a mile or more. So Private Zone, it's an interesting decision. He won the Cigar Mile great last year, like you said, one turn. Uh, we saw him beat this year at one turn in a mile race. By honor code in fact honor code's beaten them twice at a mile so i'm i'm kind of thinking that both of these horses might steer away from the dirt mile and end up in the classic and the sprint i think private zones the horse to beat in the sprint the sprint is only a half a million dollars more than the dirt mile but again i think it's a slightly more prestigious race and i think it's a race that decides the championship uh for private zone if he wins the sprint he's sprinter of the year if he wins the dirt mile He's probably still sprinter of the year, but you never know. Yeah, and, and I agree with a lot of what you said, Brian, and keeping in mind that, you know, it, it'll be a tough decision for Private Zone's uh, connections. He had a lot of success early on in his uh, American career going six furlongs. He has won big races at six furlongs. He has flopped both times at six furlongs in the Breeders' Cup sprint, I don't know where that will end up in the minds of his connections. Yeah, he's a different horse than he was then. Personally, I wouldn't worry about that. My vote for Private Zone is the sprint. He's a sprinter. This would, you know, getting a little bit of redemption in the Breeders' Cup sprint would just be the feather in a cap of, of, of Private Zone and a fantastic year. Yeah, you're right, Matt. And, and you bring up a good point. I think the connections are a little bit concerned, possibly about the six furlongs. Uh, more recently, he's won at a mile and a, certainly a seven furlongs, I think, would be their most comfortable distance kind of in between the two. They don't have that option in the Breeders' Cup. So, yeah, it, it becomes a question of do they believe they can do the sprint or do they believe they can do two turns in the mile? Interesting question. I like him as the best sprinter in the country. Uh, there's some good sprinters out there, so it won't be an easy test by any means. But at six furlongs or seven furlongs, I like private zone better than anybody. So, Matt, in the long run here, I think I'm saying neither should go in the dirt mile. Private zone goes for the biggest sprint race, six furlongs Breeders' Cup sprint. I want to see Liam's map in the mile and a quarter classic, but you disagree with that one, huh? I wouldn't mind seeing him in the race, but when push comes to shove, I think he's going to go in the dirt mile. Okay, so that's our first Breeders' Cup preview show, guys. We're talking Private Zone, Liam's Map. Matt, I have both of the top five on my top ten NTRA rankings this week. Two of the best horses in the country. Do they go dirt mile against each other? Does one go dirt mile or do they go classic and sprint? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, we'll be back again next week, Matt, for more Breeders' Cup coverage. I appreciate you joining me today. My pleasure, and uh, we'll be at the Breeders' Cup in the background uh, in, amazingly, 40 days or so. Right back here at Keeneland in a little over six weeks, Matt. We're excited. Thanks to Amber Marr, the producer back in Louisville. As always, folks, we're brought to you by Horse Racing Nation and Derby Wars. Have a good week. We'll see you next week.